Senator Abetz. Uh, thank you, Madam Acting uh, Deputy President. The Coalition supports the proposition that is before the Chamber. Let's remember that a fundamental purpose of the nation state is to in fact protect those within it, and therefore if a nation state cannot protect its borders, it is in fact not a nation state worthy of that description. And that is why the Howard government embarked upon a border protection policy which worked. And as a result, we stopped the gate crashes coming into Australia. Now, Labor leader Kevin Rudd in 2007 promised that he too would turn back the boats, that he too would ensure the protection of our borders. But what did the Labor Green government do of the 2007 to 2013 era? They went back on their promise to the Australian people and allowed over 50,000 people to come to Australia via criminal people smugglers. They were of the view that people that could afford criminals should be given priority over those in actual need. And so we as a government in 2013 went to the Australian people saying we would again stop the boats, that we would turn back boats and we would have a refugee intake based on need, not on capacity to pay criminal people smugglers. We did that and we achieved that. So why are we today still talking about people in Manus and Nauru? The legacy of the Labor Green governments. Let us never forget that. And the reason that we have legislation now on the books, the Medivac, so-called Medivac law, is as a result of Labor Greens taking advantage during the last parliament of a minority situation to try to force this issue and signal to the world and indeed to all Australians that they had not learnt the lesson of the 2007-2013 era of allowing 50,000 people to literally gatecrush Australia, part of which, might I remind you, saw over 1,000 people drown at sea. Where is the social justice in that? Where is the social justice in denying people refugee status in Australia who are needy because they've been displaced by people that have been able to afford to pay criminal people smugglers, people that have never set foot in a refugee camp? But they're the people that Labor and the Greens and the left and GetUp would support in favour of those genuinely in need. And that is why so many of the refugees that have come to Australia in recent times and have become Australian citizens actually voted for the coalition, because they saw the injustice of the Labor Green Get Up approach in allowing boat people to come here who had never set foot in a refugee camp. But those that had been living in a refugee camp for 10 to 20 years waiting for resettlement they saw that the coalition policy was in fact the correct policy, it was the just policy. And we on this side believe that that is the right way to go. And uh, later on today, the people of Australia will be regaled by what I am sure will be an excellent speech by the new member for Braddon, who follows on from an excellent speech given in the first week of the 46th parliament by the member for Bass. And Labor and Greens might like to think and contemplate why is it that those two seats changed hands. And can I say to the Labor Party, I don't know why I'm giving them this gratuitous advice, but one of the reasons is that their constituency that had previously voted Labor had seen through Labor's Medivac laws where they cooperated with the Greens, where they cooperated with GetUp, and told the people of Braddon and Bass that they had not learnt the lessons in relation to border protection. Now, coming to the actual Medivac bill, which was forced through this parliament and which I hope will be repealed as soon as possible, it is, number one, an insult to the people of Manus and Nauru 
Because what they're basically saying is that the medical provisions that the ordinary citizen of Nauru and Papua New Guinea have is not of a sufficient standard. And if that is what the Greens and Labor genuinely believe, why is it then that not everybody from Manus or Nauru that has a medical situation should be allowed to come to Australia? It is a very, very patronising and ugly reflection on Nauruans and uh, our friends in Manus. But the legislation that Labor and the Greens forced through without any consultation with experts, with our national security people, no consultation with them, forced through the parliament, was designed to send a signal to the green left inner city types that they would go back on strong border protection. That was the signalling that they undertook. And they undertook it, if I might say, sufficiently successfully to make the Australian people realise that if they wanted to keep strong borders, they had to return the coalition government. And that is what the people of Australia did, Madam Acting Deputy President, on May the 18th. They did not only renew the government's mandate, they in fact increased it. And if the Labor Party and the Greens want to continue to go down this line of saying, this Medivac law is a good law. I say you are welcome to it, but the Australian people have sought to send you a message in relation to border protection. They have tried to send you a message in relation to what a just, fair and reasonable refugee policy and intake is. And, uh, Labor can continue to live in denial, but we as a government will continue to ensure that we have good, strong border protection policies and that we do not send any signals to the criminal people smugglers that we are open for their terrible trade in human misery. And let's be very clear. There was no medical emergency in relation to the people on Nauru and Manus. Indeed, during the period, over 900 people had been brought to Australia for particular medical treatment. So they were treated on a fair and reasonable basis. So why this legislation when Labor, the Greens and Get Up knew about the actual numbers and the provision that we had to look after them? But of course we were told during this uh, debate when it occurred, and I recall telling the Senate this just uh, during that debate, that there was one celebrated case of a person demanding evacuation to Australia. And the doctors thought it was not necessary, legal action was being taken, and you can imagine the rest, finally evacuated, not on a normal a regular flight. It had to be a charter flight to Brisbane. It was undertaken at a cost of over $100,000 to our fellow Australians, taken to hospital, diagnosed with, dare I say it, constipation. $100,000. Doctors had signed off on this and, of course, as soon as the person arrived in Australia, what happened? Lawyers went to work to ensure the person couldn't be taken back from whence that patient came from. And this is the sort of manipulation that sadly occurs, and as Senator Roberts indicated to the Senate, you can have two activist doctors just saying, on the basis of what we read, this person should be medevac to Australia without actually having seen the person spoken with a person in any way, shape or form. Now, is this the way to run government? Is this the way to run national security? Is that good stewardship of the taxpayer's dollar? And of course the answer to each of those is no, no and no. Which begs the question, why is it that the Labor Party and the Greens persist and continue to persist with this nonsense which should by now have embarrassed them into just a quiet retreat and the white flag up the uh, flagpole. 
Madam Acting Deputy President, whilst the Labor Party and the Greens will not learn the lessons of May the 18th, the Australian people can be assured we will continue to pursue Thank strong border protection for our nation. Thank you, Senator Abetz.